while you're doing that, I'm going to welcome everybody to the Out of Home Insider Show, the loudest voice in Out of Home. And I've got a very special guest for you. We've been talking for probably 15, 20 minutes before I press the record button <coughs> as I'm choking on the coronavirus over here. I've got Jonathan, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hit the uh, roll of the outro. Uh, dude. I'm just not gonna do it to you, man. I'm too gringo. But we got Jonathan from LD Truck Media, and he's got a lot of good stuff to share today. Jonathan, thanks for being here, man. Oh, uh, thank you for the opportunity. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Jonathan has been such an incredible supporter of the show. If you haven't seen, go up, go back to Instagram at Home Insider. OH Insider, rather, LinkedIn, T Row Actual. You got to see the tremendous shots that he and his wife got of the Out of Home Insider logo all lit up over LED trucks. But before Jonathan got to San Francisco and doing mobile LED, he was a newcomer to America in Miami, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? That's right. That's right. Um, I moved to the United States when I was 14 years old. And, um, well, I actually moved to Boston first. Uh, that's why my 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 dad leaves, and my all my siblings they're all from Boston. And then uh, I moved to Miami when I was like 16, 17. My dad he's like, "Listen, you gotta go to your mom's." <laughs> <laughs> so I moved to Boca Raton, and uh, I saved up some money, and then um, I moved to South Beach when I was eighteen, early eighteen. And then uh, I got into, I was going to school for graphic design and marketing back then, years ago. Graduated in like 2003, but I opened my first business uh, 19 years old. It was doing printing. So I got into sort of marketing, advertising through printing. I think that was uh, 2001. Why did you choose marketing? Was it something you were just always into? Did you like design? What? what, what oh, it was, there was a deal with my mom. Um, I was a, always a great student, and um, when I moved to South Beach, you know, the war started, and then um, I was very passionate to get into the, uh, the military. So um, I'm actually have a really bad eye problem. Uh, I'm sure everybody noticed. Uh, I'm actually going blind. To be honest with you right now, <laughs> I'm losing my my eyesight. And back then, um, it was uh, a deal that I could make for a uh, really extreme surgery. Um, that the military was going to be able to actually provide if I would join the military. And then my mom was like, look, why are you going to go to war? This is good. I know you love it. You always loved it. But, um, you know, I know you love U.S., everything, but look, it's just not the greatest idea. Okay, so you want to move to South Beach? I'll support your, um, your living expenses. I'm not going to support everything else, just your rent and some food. You have to work, you wanna live by yourself, but you gotta go to school. So I was like, okay, I wanna go to school. Um, so I went for graphic design, because it was the easiest thing back then, and graphic designers used to get paid very well. And then uh, they're like, okay, well, graphic design is just not gonna cut it. <laughs> you gotta do something else. So I got into marketing. And then uh, I think it was the best decision. I mean, actually, I, I, I dropped off from Boston College. Uh, for uh, I was gonna do business in Boston College, and again, I just didn't want to live in Boston. Um, so far, it worked out. You know, sometimes it's like, why, why did I do that? People ask me Boston College, but you know, it worked out well for me. So marketing worked out, and then again, it, uh, I started doing printing when I was 19 years old because I was working for um, a fast turnaround printing company back then, who actually changed the way printing was sold back then nationwide. And Miguel Paredes, which is uh, the owner of the company, as well, was one of my mentors back then. And then uh, you know, I learned from him. And then he actually fired me. And then when he fired me, he told me, look, I'm doing you a favor. I'm like, really? I'm like, I need this, man. <laughs> it doesn't feel like a favor, man. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a favor. It was the best thing I could have done. The shop, everything. And it was a very good seven-year round. Um, then the economy went down bad. Uh, I lost, I lost the business because of Wilma, the Burger King. Yeah. So actually my shop got completely, the whole ceiling collapsed. I lost a bunch of stuff and, and FEMA came out, insurance came out. It wasn't enough to support what 
the cash loss and loss of business and stuff like that. And I remember somewhere around the, 2006, I started from zero again, back to ground zero and, you know, rebuild myself. Into uh, started working for Horizon Wireless. Actually, I started doing music festivals. I was marketing for music festivals. Then I went into wireless industry right before iPhone started. I was working for AT&T, moved to Verizon, became marketing manager for Verizon Wireless in uh, South Florida for, it was my, uh, after my first year in the company. I was doing the whole marketing for 25 stores. Wow. Uh, Facebook come up, all these things, you know, social media, apps. So I really got into technology. And Hang on, just, this is when you were still buying Facebook ads on the right hand side of the screen. Exactly. This is why, like, people, again, it, it, I started using Facebook. People didn't understand what Facebook was. You know, we saw the trend, and then, you know, I started, teach, I used to teach people how to use iPhones. I used to do classes on, like, in the rise of our stores. Like, you know, this is what the iPhone, this is what it is, Android difference. And it really got me hooked into technology marketing back then. So I saw the, the, the mobile app industry. And uh, I got an opportunity out of the blue. I mean, it was, uh, I was in a networking event in Miami. And I met this guy and he's like, we started talking about technology. And he's like, look, take a look to my app. And I look at his app and I'm like, this sucks. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, really. I don't, there's no user experience. I don't think you're going to do anything with it. It was a horse racing app. Well, long story short, he was the CMO for the largest horse racing company in the world. So I ended up, um, he called me back, I ended up getting a job with them. And then uh, I got into horse racing technology marketing for horse racing and casinos and things like that. And it was an amazing game. I mean, only about 25 people in the world used to do what I do. It was just, it's only three companies in the world that does it. And then it was great. And then... Uh, Move forward, I went to school, went back to school in New York for user experience, uh, formed their startup, couple partners. Then uh, everything went great and I got to the point that I was like, I needed to do something meaningful. I wanted to leave a legacy. And everything that I did was great and it brought me a lot of experience in marketing advertising. I was buying media, billboards for Verizon. Everything was always surrounding advertising and marketing some way, somehow. And the fact that I went to school for graphic design always helped me to understand, understand the consumer side and be able to actually, I design all the campaigns for Verizon Wireless or any, any other companies. I designed the mobile labs too and everything because that, that aspect of, uh, the, the creative aspect is so important for advertising and everybody knows this. Everybody understands that, but they don't apply, you know? So it's always for me a passion of like, okay, you know, it has to, the content, the copy, everything has to have some value, it needs to have some love. And then um, so when, my, when, when my daughter was on the way, I'm like, look, I want to do something that is meaningful. And then I talk to my friends. And I'm like, look, guys, I understand you guys, uh, business is doing really well. I did it drugs, I love it. Uh, but I want to do something different. And you guys are, uh, I, I can't do it with you guys because you guys don't want to. And then, you know, it's okay because it's, it's, it's all great business. But I wanted to do, I wanted to leave a legacy in the industry. And then, you know, maybe my daughter one day will actually say, well, my dad did this, you know. It's all about the love, really. And, um, yeah, plain and simple, I told my wife, listen, we're going we're gonna to get into outdoor advertising. We're going to start selling trucks. She's like, just open another company, Jonathan. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna keep running that one. Don't worry about it. You know, that's gonna run the marketing. Don't worry about it. We have an agency in Miami that does uh, marketing and content development. So I'm like, I just started pitching and I started, you know, developing things and developing relations and see how the industry goes. And and uh, you know, that was back in 2008, 2018. So it's only been two years, and I made the decision to move to California to because. You know, it's so, okay, I, you know, you guys run in the East Coast, let me just go to the West Coast, do my thing. Still will do nationwide sales, becoming your sales and everything. But I wanted to do things, again, in a sense that after, it was a discovery process for the first six months. And as we just talking, right, you get a lot of haters and a lot of lovers, right? So... A lot of good people actually were open for me to have a meeting, have a call, have a discussion, and you know, 
and, and understand, you know, what they're doing, how they're doing things, you know, and, and, and how can I help? Um, because even though I was semi new in the outdoor advertising, um, advertising has always been in the DNA and understand it properly. And so there are some really good folks that I was able to get really some very good basis and actually debate on how things are done. And there were a lot of pushbacks from people like who said like, dude, this is outdoor. You're just coming here new, not happening. And that was like, no, let me tell you what you're doing wrong. And then if you don't like it, then we don't discuss anymore. And so through that, the first six months or so. I, really challenge, challenging the, like the established, the, the establishment, yeah. like yeah, look because, a revolutionary type thought process, right? Hey, here's, it's like going to, to Leonardo da Vinci and be like, hey, it's a great canvas and all, but I think you should maybe paint, paint it this way. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, but again, there is, there, I mean, there are the Leonardo da Vinci's and the Dali's in the industry, 100%. They are the pioneers. But you see, when, when Facebook came out really strong, right, that out of outdoor advertising, out of home advertising actually took a tank because, you know, everybody, all the money was going to spend in beef, right? Like IPO time, hey, we've got... We've got shareholders now that we need to report revenue to. We've got to start selling ad space. Right, exactly. But that's the problem. That change. Yeah, because, again, I mean, the media buyers were going after digitally. What's the hype? Now, it's actually flipping, which is good because people are overwhelmed of ads. They actually turn them off. You know, digital marketing only works to a certain extent, and it depends on the actual product or the actual campaign that you're trying to promote. It doesn't work anymore for everything, right? Right. And if you see the evolution, I mean, again, you know, when everything, when something comes down, another thing comes up. So the influencers came up. Now influencers are dying, you know, because now people recognize like, yeah, it's the same thing over and over. What's next? Then outdoor advertising is the, the traditional media. Again, it took a time, but it actually survived the, the digital marketing uh, competitor. And it's going strong and it's stronger. The problem, it's not, it's not a problem. It, 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 I think it's, you know, everybody as a human being, you got to, you, you know, when you're wrong and you know, when you're doing something or you know what you need help, you know, we all know each other, right? The problem is actually, we don't recognize it. We don't admit it. And again, I mean, a, a lot of the, the media bars that, uh, you know, the good ones that we have good relations, we take our time to go over like, okay, really what you're trying to do, let me help you. For me, because I've been exposed to, again, I come from printing, where we used to print massive amount of flyers and, and banners for, uh, to try to get people to whatever. You know, so advertising, it was just traditional. And then going to Facebook, or you know, buy my space in Facebook to promote a music festival, when they're like, only I think it was like 20% of the market share people had a smartphone, right? And then, um, and then, and then buy media, stuff like that. It was only, there was only one thing that always stick with me. And it helped me understand how things move. It was the graphic design part and the marketing background. Marketing background, marketing is something that you learn is always evolve. You know, like, uh, you know, you can become a doctor and obviously you have to keep studying and stuff like that. But marketing is completely different. Now you, you, you have experts that know more about marketing than people that go to school. But graphic design, you have to be clever and creative because not everything fits for everybody. So that helped me. And then when I did technology and user experience, I did an amazing user experience course in, in, in New York with a top user experience consultant. She was amazing. Um, it opened my eye to like, wow, look what outdoor advertising is doing. When I mix all that stuff, I'm like, there is so much opportunity out there and so many dollars throwing out the window because they're not taking the time to really, really capture, okay, how is this team playing now? What are we doing? It's going to be effective. And then after talking to all these experts, vendors, media buyers, ad agencies, big, small, setting up meetings all over the United States, going traveling, like my wife was like going crazy. It's like, I mean, we're not even selling anything and you're already setting up all these meetings. What are we going to do? Don't worry. This is research and development. 
But, you know, it's the same case over and over. So it's very traditional. It's the traditional mindset of the media buy, even the way that our RFPs are sent right now. If you really take a look at what we're talking about right now, the user experience for a person like you or myself to fill up a grid on, on an RFP is not really, is broken because it's le- you, you're not able to fulfill the information. Uh, sometimes you don't even know if it got sent or not. <laughs> if, you, if you take a look. <laughs> That's you know what I mean? Dude, I am such a big fan of AdQuick for addressing that. I don't know if you've gotten to spend time inside the platform, but man, just in the demo, I'm watching them, look at them like this, this process takes the better part of a day and two or three people. And right. you just did it in 30 minutes exactly. and it's back to the client. The, the user experience is, it's so far beyond. Make it easy for people to spend money and they will spend money with you. Even, and even better. Make just it, ask Amazon. Make it easier. So again, we can move forward and turn business faster, right? So I'm not going to throw my names out there. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you, but uh, there is one that, you know, it took me like a day and a half to teach my VP of sale. Like he had to do like three or four proposals in order to get it. And it's still, yeah. we're like, did, did we send it? And I will go and refresh it and like, this pending, is that sent? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you know? But again, it's, uh, and especially for a media, for mobile billboards, um, filling up RFPs, we always have, um, there is not a format for us, to be honest with you, on the space room. Right. Also, well, they ask you for geopath and, and latitude and longitude. Well, it's transit. It's we don't have it. What do we put? And it's required. So what do you do? You got to abandon the actual RFP, contact the media buyers. I, I can fill it up because it, it won't let me move forward. Because, you know, you, you, your system is telling me that, you know, I have to apply something, but I, well, what am I going to put? Am I going to lie? No. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, and that's, that's, that's what it took me there. And then again, we, we, we build our, our, our company truly based out of love. And then, um, we like to, we're perfectionists. I'm a super perfectionist. Obviously there are always things that, you know, might happen here and there, but we try to, um, do every campaign just like if it was our campaign and, you know, big or small one day, one month, Three month campaign, they're all the same, really. Everybody, yeah. as long as you're coming to us, we want to make sure that we deliver the best campaign possible. There are times that we try to do so, but the client will be, no, this is what I want. And even though we advise on things the client wants, um, I'm not, a, I mean, we, we follow the instructions because there are instructions, and yes, but I'm not an advocate of like, the customer always has the, 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 the last word. I hate that. Totally I hate true, man. So I always going to debate it until I can no more and say, listen, okay, you know, but the good thing is we actually can prove how it performed. Um, and again, it's just the customer service and she's really showing the client. I mean, I've shown clients, you know, like we're in the middle of campaign and, you know, I have my guys taking videos. So look, uh, this is your route. This is what you provided. This is what you wanted. There is nobody here. You, you want us to do something else or you want us to continue because really I don't, I don't want to, I don't want you to spend my money. I don't, I don't, I need you to come back, but I need you to be happy about it. Right. I want you to like, be like, okay, yeah, it was good, but let me try something else. I want, I'd rather work with you. And, and again, that whole, um, idea of great customer service, providing technology, um, providing advice on creative or copy, um, capturing the data that we have with Adru. Um, all these things have come out into one play where right now um, it's been a blast for us. Actually, 2019 was a great, great, amazing year. I don't think, uh, I, I have asked around, but I don't think had, that nobody had, on, my, on our media has done what we did last year. And, and, and you know, I feel proud of it. And I think that um, for 2020, our goal is to leave that mark that 
mobile billboards outdoor, uh, for outdoor advertising, they're no more in second place. We gotta be right there with billboards. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun medium. I mean, it's, it's novel, right? There's so many cool pictures of people running up just to take pictures with the trucks. And we talk a lot about social engagement, how outdoor drives social engagement. And I got to think that on a per capita ratio that you guys contribute a lot to that, right? Because you're in, you know, high pedestrian uh, traffic areas a lot of times with these fun sort of activation things going on. And you must see a lot of that. You must see just a ton of social engagement with the campaigns that you do. So, so the, the, the good angle on that is, again, the big boys are billboards, right? I don't want to, I don't want to say anything. I mean, because I like billboards, but I should implement the billboards into our inventory as well, because we need it. And, and then again, billboards are billboard. Yep. Uh, what happens a lot of the times is that it's really hard to create that engagement out of a billboard. And it's harder when the actually artwork doesn't play out well. Extremely harder, you know? And um, so when, you, when you're driving on a highway, right? And you're a billboard guy, right? When you're driving a highway, that three second retention, that's all you get really, because you're driving, you gotta focus on driving. If you're in traffic, you're looking at your phone, you know? So, Billboards are great for big brands that have the money to spend and they, they want to make an impact. But for the mid-sized clients, for the startups, for the, you know, the, the, the people that don't have that budget to go on a four week or $20,000 spend, you know, but they need something. I have an event, two, three day campaign. I have something. It's, our meet is very effective. Right. It's super flexible, like you just said, like a two to three day campaign. Right. I call you up, hey Jonathan, I got this thing going on this weekend. You know, my celebrity influencers in town and I gotta drive a ton of people out. Right. Exactly. To be able to fly like that and be pretty cost efficient. Right. Yeah, what a what a tremendous value play to have in your back pocket. Yeah, and, and also what it helps us a lot is that a lot of the times clients call and you know, a lot of the deals, they're like, oh, yeah, this is great, but, you know, our art department is not going to be able to turn it around. I'm like, we got graphic designers. When, when do you need it? By tonight? I, I have designed a lot of, I have designed a lot of the campaigns myself. Um, because, you know, we want to we wanna make sure it's nice, it's creative, and at the same time, look, no matter what everybody tell me, you can't miss one of our trucks. No matter where you go, it's no way that you can not miss. Like, it's impossible. What's the size of the screen? So the trucks are staying at 13 feet high, and the screens are, the back screen is six and a half by six and a half feet, and the side screen is uh, 11, and a, 11 and a half by six and a half feet. So you, you, have, you have TVs rolling down the street that are the size of, you know, grown men and basketball hoops. Yeah, no, bigger. You, you're looking at a small size uh, Times Square billboard, which is, again, I mean, you're coming out of 32nd and 7, you've got right in front of the first billboard, it's about the size of the LED truck, and you can't miss that. So now you have a truck in front of you. Um, but again, it's, it's awesome. the trucks, um, you have to, I've seen, I've seen bad operators a lot. I'm sure everybody does in every industry. But Again, it's, it's, you also, it's already intrusive because it is intrusive, but sure. it's advertising, you know, that's what we're doing. But at, at the same time, you don't want to be too intrusive. So like you put a video that is like, you know, like that doesn't sell neither because the people are driving, the people are walking. If you're standing, you're parking and you have an event completely. But like, you know, sometimes people may send me a one minute video. I'm like, guys, great. Video looks great. Give me the last 20 seconds with a call to action because everything else, no, I mean, the people that are watching the, 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 the rest of the 40 seconds, they don't going to know where they want to go. They don't, they don't know what you're doing. They're looking at cool video and they're going on the way. So, you know, those are the things that we played out in the campaigns. You know, how do we do it? How do we execute? We go and then we track the data and see, okay, you want to 
What are your demographics? Okay, okay. This is where they are located. This is how we're gonna plan your route. Maybe we're gonna stop it for uh, if it's cannabis. We do cannabis advertising really well. And then uh, you know, school time we stop. Oh, you know, so to avoid you know being seen by minors at all. You know, uh, we map the routes. We um, we do many different things. So in it's brand to safe too. What is it? It's brand safe as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, for example, polit political campaigns. Uh, yesterday was a crazy day for us here in California. And uh, oh, yeah, I bet. Political campaigns love it because again, it's like we merge out of home advertising. We collect the data, but now we do doing retargeting social media. So we run your campaign for a week. We give you the report. We geofence the truck within 300 feet away. Tell you okay. Now um, you can pay around. Let's say you get a million impressions, million and a half. I think that's the last report. So, and um, what are you gonna do with it? You can retarget on social media or in mobile apps. We can run that for you. What's your budget? It runs exactly the same as you're doing it yourself, going through a DSP or by the data. I mean, political campaigns that loved by the data because they're like. So you give me a report with impressions, demographics, consumer behavior, do all times. And now I can actually buy this data and retarget these IDs. So that marriage you right there now awesome. we're looking at 360 campaign. And that's the goal for 2020 to break that through and make sure the media buyers actually understand it. <laughs> it's a premium product, man. That's not just running out trucks with, you know, big light up signs on it. That's a proper advertising strategy that's what i call is a vertically integrated strategy man it's top to bottom with customer service and and a quick turn time i don't know like i'm not trying to do the hard sell for you here but it's just sort of a no-brainer um right. it's shop. you talked you know a, a topic that's so near and dear to my heart is being able to challenge clients and I was just having this conversation, so I was really glad that you touched on it there for a second, right? It's it's something that not a lot of salespeople in general are willing to do, right? Great book on that, the Challenger Sale, right? The four different sales types. So it's a really hard thing to do, but how valuable is it when you can say to a client, listen, I am advising you to do this. You can do whatever you want. It's your money. But if you do it that way, this is what you should expect. And then when that happens, being willing to stand the client up and say, I told you this was going to happen. Would you like to correct it now or continue doing what we're doing? How important would you say that is for any salesperson listening, for any planner listening for just for anybody listening that has any sort of consultative responsibility how important is that well it, it, it is extremely important um, but it goes hand in hand there, there is two components or three components to that um, I would say the first component is actually you have to be able to validate what you're doing so experience right uh, in any sales um, you know, like car salesman, everybody, nobody wants, likes to be sales, so that likes to be sold. So that's why you get into these consultative sales. But, you know, guys like you or me, or, you know, me, experienced people or, or business people, it's, uh, by all means, they can capture when you know actually sure what you're talking about. And a lot of the salespeople do that. So they try to challenge the client, but they don't have maybe not enough information or maybe they do better they can translate that information to the client because they don't position themselves on the client face so it is sort of like cap selling in a sense if you take a look to it, like the outer world i mean you know there's some some so yeah. the book that mentioned strategies and that but you have to know what you're doing in order to present it in order to be able to debate it the second part is that you have to be able to besides experience you have also to have um, proof. Like, look, I'm here. If they debate it, and and the third thing, the most um, 
the one that I like the most is when clients know that you're right, but still won't do it because they don't want to need that. And that takes a lot of touch. It's like, it's like when, you, when you're single and trying to date a new girl, you have to be um, delicate about it, okay? It, it takes it take certain, it take certain uh, business experience. And uh, if you have done large size of businesses, you understand there's a lot of personal relation there when you're closing big contracts. I learned that from horse racing. And um, so be able to actually debate to the client and, and, and even though they say no, tell it, look, this is the reasons why I did it. This is, this is, I think, you know, this is why I'm telling you. I completely understand this money. I want the best for you. I really, truly do. And that's what we do. And ultimately, it's up to you. Um, I just want to make sure that you are know and understand that we can do a much better job if you allow us to actually work with you. And I will say 90% of the times I work, again, I have some pushback from clients. So like this is specific. There have been other campaigns that I try and then the specific reasons and I completely understand. But at least I know that I left that door open and I communicated um, from the professional standpoint as they hire us to be professionals and be able to execute how the things, how the campaign should be run or what are the things that are going to such so, so be prepared yeah be prepared to prove it prove it yeah be prepared to prove it while being professional and consultative and willing to challenge yeah. and doing all those things and then also understand that hey sometimes you're just gonna have to do what the client wants or you decide that i'm just not going to do business with people like that at the end of the day, it's, it's what are you willing to uh, not do? And right. But that, again, there's a lot of people that, uh, in the media that they'd rather not say anything and just run the campaign. Yeah, that terrifies me. Because, and then it, it makes it so hard, I feel like, let's just, we'll use billboards for an example. I'm sure you've had an instance like this where someone ran with someone else that didn't do those things. So it made your job twice as hard because they say that doesn't work. I tried it before. It doesn't work. Right. And now you got to work twice as hard because someone else came and fucked it up for you 100%. once upon a time. 100%. That, and that happens quite often. Actually, they're like, look, we tried this. What I'm like, you didn't, you didn't do it with us. Yeah. But you know, it was, it was a bad experience. It's actually, I hear that a lot. It was a bad experience. It wasn't, the campaign was bad. It wasn't, um, it wasn't related to the campaign. It was more about the experience. Of interesting. How the That's interesting, yeah. Then you mentioned that, and I can recall, like, a lot of times, it was, yeah, it was about experience. Yeah, you know, there was a lack of communication. Um, I hear also that, like, they, they weren't really sure if the campaign ran. I'm like, okay. Right, like a billboard, I can see the billboard. It's right there. It's, um, I see it. Right. The trucks, maybe. You know, it's market, how do you know? Right? Yeah. You can give me a GPS report, but I, yeah, I did, I, you know, like, you know. It's, sure. Was um, that your kid driving like his pizza route? I don't know. Is that an Uber driver? Who knows? Maybe. But, you know, so, but technology comes into place in, in, into what we do, but also, um, you know, it's that level of trust that, you know, really, you know, showing the client, look, you know, through all your campaign, this is what we did, you know. Any questions being responsive? I, I, got, I live on the West Coast. I got calls at six in the morning. Clients are, you know, clients are calling me and guys are calling me. I wake up every day at five in the morning just to make sure I'm ready for the East Coast. Right. And that that's, I mean, that's a very aware thing because we do business in different time zones. Right. right? I've the, I just, I just had Eddie Carolyn on from Soft Science 3D and <clears throat> he's somewhere in Canada and, you know, we're here right now and you know i'm in the city next friday and some agency meetings and i've got you know somebody a special guest lined up for the end of the day there it's dude yeah. we're, we're on international time now I work with everybody every culture every time zone um you gotta push hard and um, you know i just i just like to see more of a a unified 
environment instead of a competitive environment because it's only a few players really not just for led for billboards too like there is a lot of things out there but you know it, it should be i think it, there is there is more to come and then the industry should welcome these new companies or these new creative people that come up with new methods of how to do it. Because I think, and, and I haven't said this on record yet, so I'm. This Ooh, is my. This is my, I like it. <laughs> this is my statement moment right here. Is if if we, I'm speaking as for, for the collective here, and we'll say like the the legacy thinking collective. If yeah. we continue to resist, yeah. there are so many opportunities for anyone to be a media company today you will miss the opportunity. Will there always be a place for billboards? Absolutely. We're not fighting for market share between like you and me. We're fighting every startup that says, hey, there's space on that. I can monetize that and do it in a way that's easy to transact, transparent, and has a great customer experience because it's already been designed at scale for every other industry. Exactly. Do you agree or disagree? One hundred percent. I mean, again, it's if you don't join the forces. Uh, again, I mean, my millennials right now they're very smart in technology. Um, I think the lack of uh, work methodologies, but um, technology is taking over. And then it's just, just like you said, just uh, you just need that clever mind to say, "I'm gonna do this. This is different." Um, fortunately, out of, uh, uh, outdoor advertising requires some capital. And that's where yeah. yeah. it's like funding and in order for you to sell campaigns to agencies, you need to be able to fund them and wait <laughs> because that's just the nature of the business. A lot of guys can't, but uh, you know, there, there is new technologies coming out. There is new, like we're launching, uh, I'll give you an exclusive. So we're launching a, a, a that's if if i had someone on like on, on like the soundboard right now someday when when, I'm, when we're big time like joe rogan we'd play like a sound effect there like <laughs> like the daily double two exclusives in one day i got dogs for all over now we're launching okay. uh, we did a so. part, uh, partnership with a company out of la we're launching um, a series of new inventories across the united states across markets we're oh, ready man. Uh, we're launching next week. You're going to see the new line of LED bicycles. What? That's sick. LED bicycles. Now, are these bicycles that you're going to have riders hired to ride? How do, how does some, how do they need to be pedaled? Jonathan, have we considered how they're going to be pedaled? Do you have AI robots? What is, uh, what's the plan? Only their bicycles. Uh, it's, it's not a brainer, but, uh, Again, it goes hand in hand. I'm not sure people are going to come up with things similar, but the good thing is that we're, we're, a, we're a year ahead, I think, on that. Um, we're also going to tie that in with um, other podiums that we're breaking a deal for. Uh, the podiums, I still uh, keep that on the low, but it's happening in 2020, probably end of summer. And then uh, we added billboards, like I said. So, are we asking the entire internet to keep it low because this is like? Well, I mean, uh, the, 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 you'll see what the you see is. And I had an interview yesterday, and uh, I didn't release this as exclusive. But uh, look, inventory and things like that. It's not. I mean, anybody can build a LED truck. We can do it as good as we do because our trucks, thanks to Alex, pushed ever. Yes, uh, I mean, these, these trucks are like fifteen years. But it's not about owning a truck. It's not about owning the inventory. It's actually how you actually, how you put all this thing together. You know, it's, it's deeper than just having the inventory. So yeah, I'm sure people are going to come up with bicycles and things like that. But it's uh, the way that we're going to start rolling campaigns for our clients. We're going to offer an array of services that is not only people will see it in the truck, but we can also do inside events we can you know it's this is solo it, i mean i don't want to i don't want to step too much into experiential experiential is a whole different animal and i love it like we have simulcast seven trucks with drones and everything we have done some crazy stuff that fortunately for nda purposes we can really show a lot but we i've, I've gone beyond like 
my friends are like, really? Like, how are we going to do this? Like, this is how we plan it. We don't carry on like simulcast, like, you know. And um, this 2020, what we're doing is really giving, um, of offering our clients and our sales partners and our media buyers the opportunity to just do a full 360 campaign, billboard, truck, bicycle, podium. You want to target your audience, we'll do it properly. We collect all that data and we still run it on social media. So hopefully, you know, we get there and then maybe I'll be speaking at a conference next year. <laughs> well, I believe we file that under strong as death. That would be just like the coolest campaign you could probably ever do for yeah. so many reasons. And there's so many different ways to use that. that uh, man, I'm excited to see it all play out. Exactly. So we're going to release our promo video in a, in a, in a, in a week or so. Cool. Podiums are coming up in the, again, late summer. Um, hopefully we have um, enough podiums and at least two markets. I want to do Miami and New York to start on those. Bicycles, uh, LA, we're ready launching, and then uh, Miami's next market. And then towards the end of the year, uh, that one is a surprise, but I, I'm sure everybody's going to love that one. We'll have to do this again uh, as we get closer to the year. Go friendly because we understand our trucks, again, they're gas, you know, like every other car, you know? Sure. So, you know, we wanted to go eco friendly, have eco friendly solutions, especially for clients that appreciate eco friendly. Um, so, yes, this our new solutions will be, well, you still have batteries for sure. They're not sort of eco friendly. But we're no have emissions, <laughs> which is better. LED sailboats. That could be a thing. Well, there is boats out there. Um, I, I know. I mean, the, the guy in New York, I got to get him on here. They're, they're great. They're great. Um, just, uh, I'm, I'm not a water guy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just but I, keep, no, I, I love keep it on wheels. They do an amazing job. Those boats are in Miami. They're tremendous. You can't miss them. Um, it, it's, 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 it's a great. Too bad it's like you can do it everywhere, you know? Right. Too bad that, you know, then transporting a boat, that would be a mass, massive uh, infrastructure. But I, they're doing an amazing job. I think I give kudos to these guys because they really tap into a industry with something innovative as well. And then it's not really easy to sell advertising on a boat. I can tell you that. I try. Where, where is, if you had to place a bet today, what is going to be the biggest change in out of home in the next 12 months? Rates. Rates. Up, down, or just more efficient? I think, I think this year, media buyers will learn more how to position their advertising budget and it's going to cost for at least billboard advertising rates to go down lower than what they are right now because you got a lot of a lot more mid-sized companies and the demand is now like look i don't need four month campaign i need the spaces here and there like companies like lead ad quick you know they're, they're actually sure. doing this market so now what we're doing we went we went mainstream on like I can buy a billboard right now. I can buy an ad right now. Just go to ad quick, I put it in, put my ad work, send it over, get it approved and done. I don't need the media buyer. So I think that that's going to force a lot of media buyers to, and agencies actually, to, to take a look to, to the agency fee and restructure that or partner it up with the technology companies and be able to um, work out deals. So to keep the rates that anybody can buy. At the same time, it's gonna affect a lot of the business of the big companies because, again, rates go down. Now Coca-Cola is not gonna pay the same amount for a billboard in Times Square that they were paying two years ago. So why am I paying more when everybody's paying less? You know. So I think rates is gonna be something that uh, for 2020 is gonna is, is gonna have to restructure, uh, which because of that, I think that a lot of the lazy um, media buyers will get out and the good people will stay because they understand how to reinvent themselves into that and look for new media. 
that's a great point about leaning it out and probably see some consolidation of maybe right. mid a couple of mid-sized players get together and say, hey, you've got this. We've got a few synergies and let's do this sort of thing. Right. Yeah, that's sure you fun start, to see. you start seeing after the conference uh, a few partnerships coming up. That you, might, you might surprise you. You start seeing, like, you're going to see guys, like, I mean, when it's dribbling, in how many years, 20 years in the industry, those out of nowhere, that's going to happen. Um, this year, I think is you, you're going to see, because of rates and because of, of technology itself, you're going to see some mergers. Even um, if they announce it or not, companies are, gonna, are, gonna, are, are being forced to work closer together rather than compete so much. And market share, you know, so companies going to have to give up in some things and then be able to open up for other players to come into the table because they're going to need that. They're going to they need that small business. And yeah, so, there's always going to be a need for that, right? We just can't sell yeah, that space to... I was in Miami last week and uh, you know, I'm trying to put a billboard in Miami looking into the options. And <laughs> to my surprise... I mean, we, we have everything that is possible to put the billboard. The only thing that is holding us back is because there is another billboard is just at the border of the distance between legally billboard, but it's just because it's owned by one of the monsters that we're getting blocked. So mm. for us, like, we want to spend money on lawyers and like go after and then maybe, you know, do it and spend forty, fifty, hundred thousand dollars and like enclose the billboard and they like, the billboard will sell, but you really want to go into that bottle. And that's sad because, you know, it should be, you know, I mean, you don't want to go crazy and put billboards everywhere. You want to follow regulation and everything. But, you know, I don't want to be stopped because some big companies actually um, have more money to pay lawyers. That's because that's all it is. It comes down to lawyers. Right. <laughs> really, the lawyers are the ones to make the money. Everybody else has got to deal with it. Sure. So, yeah, but that's my take up for 2020, I think. And again, great things happening, great operators happening. Um, a lot of people will come out. Um, hopefully, the industry stays. Hopefully, we do bigger and better things that we can actually get more share of a uh, digital marketing budget. Um, I think digital marketing budget is just being thrown out there. Like, Do you think that's where the most money is up for grabs, is in the digital marketing space, or does it come from one of the other traditional players? No, I think I think for for us is 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 digital marketing and the at least for for us for the elite truck media, and it's because when you run social media campaigns, well, I mean that's what that's Facebook model is so it's, it's, it's great because they they give you listen you use in my platform I let you target whoever you want right, but again it's been proven that these algorithms and all these things are so convoluted that you really don't. You don't really know, it's like you know. So you gotta keep throwing money out there, money, 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 money. I mean, I run campaigns where we spend a million dollars on social media ads, and you know, like yeah, we got results, but we had to spend a massive amount of money. And so for us, the grab is that look, let's say you have a million dollars and your marketing spend is, uh, your marketing budget is. Uh, 700,000 for social media and you want to do 300,000 on, on outdoor. So what I do is, okay, let's flip it. Give me 500,000 for outdoor and we run the social media campaign from the data collected from the outdoor campaign so it's targeted. So you're not doing cheese on pizza and see if it works. At least you know that, if, that when you're running that campaign, they already saw the truck, they already saw the bike, they already saw the podium, they already saw the billboard. You know that happened and you're retargeting that ID. So when I give you the report and I say, listen, we, got, we captured one million impressions and we're gonna run uh, this social media campaign to these one million impressions and these are your results. These were people that actually saw it rather than do it out there, you can get some demographics on locations, yes, whatever, okay, get a report, wait for the phone for the phone call, you know. And again, everything goes 360, so creative. They gotta see it. If, if you, you can do campaigns where like, 
entice somebody to get curious and then you hit them in social media with actually what it is. You, you can, um, there's many ways to do this. I don't want to throw ideas out. I'm no, man. Them, they don't want to call us, but. <laughs> no, you're you know what I mean? It's, 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 like, it, it, people, for, to do business with anyone, right? I have to know who you are and right. then I have to like you and then ultimately I have to trust you. It is always and will always be a funnel. I had some crazy person tell me it's not a funnel, it's multiple digital touch points. And I, I, I wanted to just drag them under a table and, and pummel them. But that's it, man. If people don't know who you are, they can't come to appreciate or have an affinity for you and therefore can't do business with you. Right. So to be able to offer all of those things in one little package is pretty yeah. benefit. So yeah. So for us, I think that that's, that's, that's what is, that's where we try to grab the market share at least on budgets. And then um, I think for billboards, say you guys got it very difficult. You guys, <laughs> you guys are like mom and pop going through a divorce. <laughs> Man, it's an interesting time. It's, I got to tell you, it's great because there is so much positive momentum for out of home right now that conversations for the industry are getting easier. You know, being able to have conversations like this and as people are looking for information about out of home, to be able to hear from people that are from outside of out of home, which is a lot of people that are you know, look, looking at it maybe for the first time, That's to cool. be able to say, hey, listen, it's, I get it. It seems like this crazy thing, but it's kind of like this thing that you've already been doing. Right. In fact, it's way cooler. It's like awesome. Come drink the Kool-Aid. It's really a lot of fun. You should stay a while. Like, it's pretty. It's pretty great time to be in out of home. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very exciting time. I think again, it, the numbers keep showing that it's gonna grow. Even though, like I said, I mean, I, I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. The rates actually go up. Uh, the demand goes up. That would be great. Uh, let's just see that happening because uh, I think it needs an adjustment. But it still, it's gonna keep growing because you know that's, that's where you wanna be. You wanna be outdoor. You don't wanna, you know, if if you think. If you're saying that you, you have marketing budget that you don't do outdoor, you're missing a component. And then if you think that your people, because you get a report on social media that people actually saw your ad, you don't know because the same, the same that you're doing, I'm doing. I'm not, I see an ad, I scroll. For sure. Unless I'm looking at it and I have to wait for it. And so while I wait for it later, I'm like, oh, yes, honey. You know? oh, okay, then I, let me continue my thing. And yeah. that's why I love what you said the other day when we spoke and you said out of home is kind of just like that, right? Except our, our drives to places, our commute to work is our news feed. And rather than being interrupted with my, you know, Aunt Joe's cat or, you know, what you had for lunch, I'm just driving and then I'm being entertained by this advertising that I see and interact with every day. For us, what it works, and you know what we, I'm going to tell you what's the biggest problem for us? Is that on our LED screens, we get a ton of people all the time. I love your dog. I have mine here. <laughs> I, got, I got a ton of people all the time. Um, they're taking pictures of the screens. Right. Taking a picture of an LED screen from our camera phone is, if you don't know how to do it, it's going to show lines. Oh, you just come out looking crazy? <laughs> <laughs> people take pictures and then they go back and they want to see what it is. Sometimes you can see it or not. So um, I'm, I'm trying to pull up sort of like a one-on-one -on -one guy how to take a quick picture to an LED truck because that should be available. That's so, a cool That's a cool campaign that to, to yeah, just use yeah, on your own trucks. Yeah, like teach people how to take pictures. If you see somebody taking pictures, show them so they can actually. You know them. what? You know who I'm having on here next week is Stedman Cleveland from the Tada app. Have you uh -huh. seen this yet? No, 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 no. I'm going to ask him about this because he's got an app called Tada. And my understanding of it, because I've got a, a broken old Android device, and it's only available on the iPhone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so 
it, maybe you try this. This Tada app, anyway, is like the Shazam for billboards. You oh, just no point it, yeah, you point it at the billboard and it does something. So if you've got the iPhone, you got down T A D A W. I think they've got a campaign. You're going to LA, right? He's got a campaign in LA, I think, right now. Oh my God, you got to connect me with this guy. This is awesome. I will connect you as soon as we're actually, you know what? While you're downloading it, I'm going to. I'm in guys. T A D A W. A W. T A D A W. No, I see T A D A A. What is it? Oh, maybe, maybe I, there's a link. Oh, maybe some data. Send it to me. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. You see, these are the things, innovating things, things like that. If these guys are going to start coming out, these two startups. Like, I love the startup environment. I was in a startup. We put a lot into technology. Uh, it, it's, it's technology was going to make a difference of how we buy media, you know? And, and, you know, apps like this, genius ideas, that's what's going to happen. That's what people is going to actually come out and say, wow, let's do this. Let's, you know, it's going to change the landscape. For That's sure. been what's so fun about doing this for me is being the billboard guy in Eastern Pennsylvania is awesome, but I'm getting so exposed to just a ton more and I'm able to expedite that down to like my AEs and sort of give them pieces as I hear conversations. So like hopefully other organizations use this show for the same type of purpose Hey, let me distill a whole lifetime of experience into an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, and let's play pieces out of it that we find especially valuable. So hopefully that's happening. Hopefully that continues to happen. And uh, I know you got our support or our love, whatever you need. Next oh, question. You know it, man. LA, so hope, I mean, wait for that one. You're going to love that one, actually. It's going to be massive. I can't, wait. <laughs> I can't wait. It's just so crazy. I'm sharing it with everyone like, uh, my, I've got my son this weekend, and he thinks that he's turning seven in April. He's going to turn seven the day after getting back from Go 2020. And uh, he thinks billboards are super cool now. And, uh, he, yeah, he's going to be super excited. Cool, yeah. But, yeah, but it was a pleasure. I think it was a great idea. I just take this picture because, again, we like to support everybody. We like to work with every single party out there, you know. And then, uh, yeah, we uh, some of some some people will see us as our friends rather than competitors, and then uh, they want to see us as friends. The friendship guys, you know, this is so it's, it's, uh, it's support each other and bring a better industry, you know. Sure. If someone wants to support, reach out, connect with you. What's the best way to do that? You're you're active on a couple social channels. Give us all of that uh, information. I'll make sure to have it in the show notes. Thank you. So. Our website, leadtruckmedia.com. Uh, new website coming up. It's going to be sick. 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 Uh, 2020 campaign is going to be sick. Um, Instagram, Media. If they want to see some of the cool stuff that we're doing, I mean, we should be more active on, uh, on Instagram. We're building stuff. And then uh, my LinkedIn, Jonathan Trileras. Anything in my cell phone, 917-224-3633. I always answer the phone or send me a text. I'm always on it. <laughs> So, yeah, reach out anytime. Even if they have a question, it doesn't have to be just, you know, to purchase booking a campaign, you know, even want to talk, you know, do business, whatever it is, you know, more than happy to, to talk to anybody. Absolutely. And Jonathan is a wealth of information. And like he said, he is more than happy to give it. So take him up on those offers. I've learned so much in just the past couple of days of, getting to know him and obviously the time that we've all spent here together. I can assure you this is not the last time that we have Jonathan on. So for the Out of Home Insider Show, I'm Tim. To my man Jonathan from LED Truck Media, thank you so much. If this has been helpful, share it with somebody else that could benefit and we'll see you real soon. See you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.